What's up guys, so this is the post 250 FYCS tier list. So to start off with Pendulums, Pendulums didn't do anything as far as I'm aware, I don't think it had any tops at all. Um, and I'm actually going to put it firmly in non-meta, I think it just doesn't compete with any of the top decks at the moment. It's a good deck, or it has some potential anyway, but um, right now it's just doing nothing special. Similar to Sky Strikers, I'm going to be quite strict with this. Um, this is going to be based literally on the actual results of the tournaments, not just on what could be good. Um, same with Burn Stall Strategies, none of them did good. Runic, Burn st Stun Straw isn't bad, however I would say that it didn't, it didn't perform we didn't see any specific runic stun strategies doing an amazing job. So the first tier one deck is definitely going to be Sprite. Sprite was really, really good. Um, a bunch of different variants. So we saw Sprite Melfi win in London. We saw some Sprite Live Twin. Joshua Schmidt had a really interesting build that some people were doing, which was like more focused on the Live Twins than the Link Summoning. Um, and I, I would say Sprite's in a really, really good spot right now. It's probably the second best deck. It's, I'd say the top three engines in the game are the Runic engine, the Sprite engine, the Kashira engine. And the thing about Sprite is that it's just so efficient with his resources that it plays really well into interruptions. If you hit Sprite with any interrupt that's not Nibiru or like Gamma, they are ahead because they still keep the body on board and they can just link. So it's like you hit the sprint with like an Imperm, then they just turn it into a Gigantic. And then it's like, you get, it's like, it just gives them so much ability to kind of play through hand traps and then cause problems for you. And then they have so much utility, access to so much utility, quite a lot of room in the space as well for interruptions. And then there's just different variants of Sprite to play. And the other thing as well is that no, I would say no one card really hard stops them. Like Dark Real is good against some Sprite variants, but it's not perfect. Like Runic Sprite doesn't lose as hard to it. And even if you Dark Ruler them, they often have a double cross set. Their combo is usually a one to two card combo. So <coughs> you Dark Ruler them, but it's like, okay, you traded one card and they've still got follow up for next turn, all these kind of things. Just a very, very good deck right now. Has a lot of potential. I would say Konami's probably going to hit Sprite. Um, I would be shocked if they didn't at least give it a bit of a love tap just because it's been out for so long. But uh, yeah, great deck. Um, Bestial Dragon Rulers, I'd say, is like bottom of tier 2, high tier Rogue. The problem with the Bestial Dragon Rulers deck is just that the Bestials aren't amazing cards right now. Branded is not a real threat, and that's the only deck it's, it, that the Bestials are like super good against right now. Like, they're not even amazing against Mathmech, I'd say they're okay against Mathmech. And so, that's why this deck didn't do better. It's a very good build, it's a very good... It's a very good theory, and it's like I said, Dragon Link always evolves. However, it's just not the right format. Maybe next format with more Mana Dome stuff. I think Mana Domes has some lights. I might be wrong. That might be where it comes up. But now it's bottom of tier two. We saw a couple of people do well with it. Runic is another tier one engine, so we saw a bunch of different Runic variants. And yeah, Runic is just good because there's just so much utility in it, and it doesn't play the game the same as the other decks. And it has the thing that Kashira has as well, where it forces your opponent to deck build and manage their resources weirdly because you can just banish key pieces from their deck before they even get to interact to it the runic matchup can be really frustrating for you because you can play against runic and just lose the game after two to three turns just because they've been punishing your deck similar to kashira which makes them just better than most decks in the grind very very good and then obviously so runic sprite is probably the best i, I think runic for hire is good and i do have for high then i will talk actually i'll talk about for higher now so i think for high is good i'm gonna put for high as low rogue non-meta i think the root i think the reason why Runic for Hire topped, I think, is because Ding Kabui is a very strong player. And I also think that most people didn't know what the Fur Hire cards did. But I don't actually think it's that much better than any other Runic variant. I don't think it I think it's probably one of the worst ones. Um I, I, I really do think it's more the another case of more the pilot than the deck itself. And I think the Runic engine does carry a lot of the weight as well. The Runic engine is so strong that you can mix it with a lot of decks and do well. So um, while I do think Fur High has a little bit of niceness, they did get a, a nice new card card in Donna. I don't know, is it Donna? It might not be Donna. Whatever the dinosaur is, um, I still don't think it's amazing. San Avalon Recar, I guess I'll put it bottom of tier two. Again, I think this is another one. I think the deck is is mainly piloted by people who know the deck well. But I think the thing about Recar is that it's just the deck has so many random weaknesses. Like it has a slight weakness in Nibiru. It struggles occasionally with big monsters. It struggles occasionally with monsters that can't be targeted. It is a bit limited to its field spell. So it's like if you get rid of their field spell, they do lose a lot of their interaction, stuff like that. But then it also has some really, really bust interactions. I think Rika Petal is an amazing card. Rika Petal means that Rika usually does do well in grinds because Petal will keep coming back and they can pretty much one card combo off Petal. So uh, that does give them a lot of potential. So that's why we did see some of them top. And they do have a new combo that Tom Rose made, which is really awesome so i don't think sun avalon or rika is like super super amazing bottom of tier two i think is fine and i think that's where it'll stay 
Swartol didn't perform as well as I thought it would. Um, so I actually put it lower in tier 2. I thought Swartol would have some potential. I thought it would do really good. But I think it's just a power level thing where Swartol doesn't have a terrible Kashira matchup. But everything else it has a mediocre to bad matchup in. I also think that the barrier was probably very, very present. And because of branded and D-Barrier also shuts down Sword Soul, same as Grave of Super Ancient Organism. I think that also probably hurt it a bit as well. So I think it's a case of collateral damage. Um, Sword Soul's not a bad deck, but I think, yeah, just a lot of collateral clapping. Virtual Odd has not been meta in a long time. Labyrinth, I think those one or two Labyrinth tops, again, there wasn't a huge amount of people playing these trap and back row decks, and it's just because Runic plays so well into those decks, and Sprite to an extent as well, and Kashira to an extent. All of these decks collaterally destroy, well, Runic directly destroys back row decks, but then the rest of them kind of collaterally just winning its back row decks a lot of the times, which is a problem. And so that's why I think Labyrinth didn't perform as well as it could have. I think also when you're expecting, when back row decks are expected, they always do worse because there there's just so many cards that make it unfair for back row decks, where it's like you can just get dusted out of the game or cycle on a key floodgate and blah 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 and so as a result yeah labyrinth didn't do well madoche is going back into the depths of non-meta slash rogues it's probably bottom of rogue to non-meta um yeah it's just not doing anything special this format drytron i'd say is high tier rogue low tier 2 right now i i think what's nice about drytron the reason why it performs well or not performs well but the reason why a couple of people did well with it is because it does have that thing of if it goes first it does fdk you however droll is in the format and a rise heart pass is a thing and those two things and so droll shifter and a rise heart pass do fdk drytron Everything else they can pretty much deal with, but those three things they can't, and those three things were in force. Most people were either playing Casteria, playing Droll, or playing Shifter, which meant that a lot of matchups Drytron just ended up losing and it couldn't do much about. Um, moving on from that, Dinos, it's crap. I'm going to put it all the way at the bottom of non meta. All the way to the bottom. All the people said Dinos were good, they're lying. Guys, Dinos is trash. I don't know what people were thinking that would be great this format. It's not, it's, it's useless. Didn't do anything. Um, Grand Marge as well didn't do much this format, unfortunately. Tri Brigade was another one. I think there were a couple of Sprite Tri Brigade players, but pff, yeah, Tri Brigade engines power crept, unfortunately. Flunder is. <laughs> do you know what it is? I feel like Flunder has so much potential, but I think it's 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 got the branded syndrome, and because of that, low tier two high rogue. I, I, so it's the branded syndrome of the deck is too bricky and too easily targeted. And, and because Flunder is of the way Flunder plays as well, it's like, if the Flunder player has Rubina and they manage to crack your board, great. But if they don't, they just lose to their own deck so much, many times. And and the thing is as well, before when they had Barrier Statue, they had an unfair win condition they could rely on. They don't even have that anymore. So Flunder is still a good deck, but I think what held it back a lot is kind of... It's just very easy to target. The deck does lose to itself. It does have room for non-engine, but it's even limited in the kind of non-engine it can play. So all of this put together did kind of weaken Flunder a bit. I, if I'm not mistaken, I think there was either Flunder in the fight in the finals or Flunder in top four. Um, I think it was uh, I don't know some guy. I can't remember. I'm pretty sure there was a Flunder in like top four or something. So it's like it did perform a little bit, um, but just not amazing eldritch so we've been seeing some eldritch dragoon builds come back up which is nice and i guess the less bestials and stuff and graveyard hate is making eldritch better but fundamentally speaking i'd say it's a worse trap deck than labyrinth so yeah um synchro there wasn't any synchro spam decks that i saw that did amazingly well correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think i saw any exosisters as well is somewhere just not really in the meta like i wouldn't i wouldn't even consider exist a rogue it's just not a relevant deck all of the cyber decks are kind of rogue and higher they're all doing quite well so i'd say salad is probably the worst First, um, being somewhere mid to low rogue, um, but it's still a good cyber stack in my opinion. Marincess is high tier rogue, I would say. One of the nice things about Marincess is that it's all water, which allows it to dodge a lot of things and play a lot of unfair cards. The fact that it can, it's one of the decks that can play totally very easily as well is great. Zelantis is an interesting piece of removal that Marincess has access to, and the fact that it's a one card combo deck with a lot of recursion is good. However, I'd say the biggest issue of Marincess is there's not a lot of space in the extra deck, and it means that a lot of the times that they struggle to OTK, which is a problem in this format, because in this format, a lot of times you play, you get stopped, your opponent plays, they get stopped, you play, you kill them. That's how it tends to be. Um, we stop each other until one person can full combo and kill, and that full combo and kill part Marincess isn't perfect at. They, they can do it, they're cyber stick, they have access to access code update jammer, but a lot of their tools do lock them into waters, um, well not lock, but one of their main tools does lock them into a water for example, which does limit the ability to do more OT play, OTK players later on, but it's still a good deck. Um, Mathnek I would definitely say is high tier 2. So I did underestimate Mathmech a bit. It felt just weak and subpar to me, but you know what? In fact, I'm even going to put it higher than all the other tier 2 decks. I don't think there's a tier 2 deck that is as good as Mathmech here. And I think 
I, I think I just underestimated the notion that Mathmec, the ability to play off Circular, like Circular is just such an OP, incredible card that it just wins a lot of games by itself. You resolve Circular and then punish your opponent with the other four cards in your hand. And this is just very hard to deal with. And I think this is one of the few decks that even in the Kashtira matchup, Circular can just win you the game because if they do, even though Mathmec kind of loses to a Rise Heart Pass, they're playing off one card to OTK you or set up a board which means that they have four other cards to deal with a Rise Heart. And now with Small World, Small World can get them a Kaiju or can get them Gamut out a Rise Heart. They're going to be playing three in Perm. They're probably going to be playing, I don't know, like a, uh, they're probably going to be playing like a Dark Rune or something post side. All of these things together mean that Mathmic does very, very well in this format when there's one, I'll say there's only one deck that it hard loses to going second sometimes, and that's Kashtira. Every other deck, it can usually just hand trap to death and win. And so because of that, as a Mathmic player, you can put like, 13 targeted interruptions for a rise heart pass which means you don't lose to it so yeah mathmec definitely has a lot of potential definitely did very well on the ycs as well we saw loads of them top but yeah good deck at the moment and and i'd say as well mathmec is probably going to stay like that i i don't think konami's gonna hit it they might but i'd be shocked if they did because it, i'd be shocked if they hit it and they didn't hit anything in the top tier basically um but because of that i think it's a good card in the next format as well i think again um a lot of um, Cybers and Co-Talkers for what is coming out, that's going to mean that actual Co-Talkers become stronger and circular combos are going to become even, have more, even more potential. So yeah, Math Mech's really, really good. Um, Punk, Synchro Spam decks, somewhere non meta than relevant. DDD, we haven't seen this for ages. I think Kashira being around is holding this deck back. I do think DDD is actually still quite a good deck because it's another deck that can play a lot of hand traps and has a lot of one and two card combos. But being a dark deck and being a graveyard deck meant that last format, Bastilles and Tear crushed it. This format, Kashtira crushes it, especially because DDD plays a huge amount of one-offs, which it really, really... If you if you play loads of one-offs in your combo deck, you're struggling against Kashtira and Runic. I do think next format, though, DDD has the potential to be a rogue deck, maybe even a tier 2 deck. I'm calling that now. So I'm actually going to put DDD in one to watch, even though it is non-meta right now. Tour Elements, I'm putting at the bottom of tier 2, and I, Tour Elements is going to become the new Dragon Link in that I think it's going to be a deck that people are going to continue to evolve with. I don't think Konami's going to hit it again. And and because of that, I think Tour Elements has a lot of potential. I think when Kashtira goes, I think Tour Elements is going to be insane. It can put up some really crazy boards, and it does have synergy with a lot of different decks. But again, it just it does kind of struggle now, because... If you're, you're against a Runic or Kashtira, and I'm going to keep bringing these things up, but if you're against a deck like that, you can just kind of get shut out of the game onto elements. But still a very good deck. Still in the meta, I would say, still has potential. Ignis does... This is what I actually took to YCS. I'm going to actually put Ignis down to Rogue, and it fundamentally just comes down to the fact that even though Mathmech Ignista is strong, but it's only strong really because of Circular. Circular carries that deck. And I came to the realisation that you just might as well just play Mathmech. Just focus on circular. The Ignis the combo is great. A rival pass will win a lot of your matches, but you also lose a lot of matches for free against Runic and stuff because Ignis the can't play as much utility because they also lose to all the things that Mathmex loses to. And so a rival pass, if you get to a rival pass, you win most of your games. But getting to a rival pass is the big issue. And so it, in my opinion, while I think it is actually better than all the other cyber decks, apart from uh, Mathmech. I think that the gap is just too big. The ability to play so much utility in Mathmic is just too too good, and we can't understate it. I think ABC is bottom of, of tier two. It's not amazing. Um, it's not terrible though. The AFD unlimit did help it a little bit. Um, Old guy somewhere in on meta. So branded, 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 branded is a really interesting one. So branded, I'm gonna put right at the bottom of tier two, top of rogue, bottom of tier two. Here's the thing about branded. It is a good deck. However, and I think everyone's been saying it for a long time. Branded, fundamentally speaking. It, it, it can never be a top tier or never be the best deck when everyone's playing it. Because if it gets targeted, it does really lose. And it's got two problems in that loads of it has a target on its back because loads of people are playing it. And then it does not beat Kashira, which is the best deck undisputed. And so because it doesn't naturally... Because you have to remember as well, Branded Fusion, a lot of people say Branded Fusion, for example, outs a Rise Heart Pass, but it doesn't, firstly. A lot of the time it doesn't. And secondly, even if Branded Fusion outs a Rise Heart Pass, a Rise Heart Pass can be done off one card. Branded Fusion is your best card, which means the Kashtira player is using one card of, and they've got, how many, nine copies of that? Ten copies of that one card combo to make a Rise Heart Pass, and then four other good cards in their hand. Branded Fusion, you've got one Branded Fusion and then four other okay cards in your hand. Probably more like two bricks or one brick and then three mediocre cards in your hand, because Branded Fusion is the best card by far. It's pretty much the only one card combo in your deck. Branded Fusion at Slash Luba. And because of this, it just means that you're always on the back foot against Kashtira. If they do their full lock board as well, 
you're screwed because you can't use spells and also because you have a lot of one-offs. If they do a Rice Heart Pass, you're not in a good position either because they're going to punish you for using Brand Diffusion and then also they've got four other cards to interrupt you with. And then it doesn't do amazingly into Sprite art either. Um, Sprite Carrot is actually a really frustrating interruption for Brand Diffusion because it's a bit like Ash where Branded Loss doesn't save you. Um, you can't play, really play the Patchwork variant as effectively because um, Draw exists right now, which is a problem. We did see some people playing Keeper of Draconic Magic, and I do think that's an interesting tech, but the problem with that tech is that it loses very hard to Imperm. So if you're playing Keeper of Dragon Magic and you're doing that combo to make Dragoon before your um before your to make Dragoon before your brand of fusion, if they Imperm or negate your keeper, you lose even harder unless you have Brand of Fusion already in hand, which is a big, big problem I'd say for that deck. So I I'd say Brandon, it just has too many different weaknesses the gimmick puppet lock is also just not relevant everyone's prepared for it now for example people just like i had it done to me in in um in ycs and you know i did a set two d barriers and passed and then he couldn't play for two turns and i won little things like that do hold the deck back so it is getting more support i don't think the support is going to make it super better it's going to help it a little bit but the problem is as well is that all the support towards branding is geared towards making what it does with branded fusion better but that's not what it needs it needs ways to play without branded fusion and until it gets a really consistent way of doing that, it's going to be yeah, stuck in purgatory, like bottom of tier two. I don't, I don't know. Someone can tell me. I don't know if Brandon has had a YCS win. Has it? Maybe it hasn't. I'm just gapping. But it hasn't had one this format anyway. And um, I think, again, it's largely because it just it, it does struggle with all the issues I mentioned. Renaissance, somewhere at the bottom. Naturia is, as an engine, I'll say, so Naturia Runic is definitely tier one. I'd say so. Yeah, I put. I, 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 that's a. Re I, I don't want to confuse people. You know, if you only look at the tier list, you'll be confused here. But um, Nishiro Runic is tier one. Um, one of the nice things about yeah, so uh, we've talked about Runic already, but one of the nice things I'd say about Nishiro Runic is that Nat Beast is just really unfair. Nat Beast, you're just adding Runic but putting in a Nat Beast as well, and then Sunflower is great as well. And, and the ability to kind of do that infinity negate thing against people with Naturia is very, very difficult to deal with, especially in a format where there's so many good spells. Um, it's also very good against Kashira because you know what's going to happen? The Kashira player is going to summon and try and beat over it, and then you just destroy their monster anyway, so they can't. So, I mean, all these things does give that Naturia very, um, runic um, build a lot of potential. Um, the two archetypes do have great synergy as well. Yeah, definitely very, very good deck. Dogmatic, I don't know, somewhere non meta it's not been relevant. Um, I'm going to remove this as you think it's not relevant. Kashtira, best deck of the format by far. So yeah, look, I mean, it had a ridiculous representation in the top card. It was like over 50%, I think. So definitely tier 1, potentially tier 0, because I think some people define tier 0 as 50% or more of top card representation. Some people say 50, some people say 65, some people say 75. But yeah, Kashtira is amazing. <laughs> Who would have thought one card combos and banishing everything your opponent has is definitely just hard to deal with. But yeah, very, very good deck. Konami may hit it. It's hard to say with Kashira because, on one hand, they just got their kind of. They've only really had one format to play. On the other hand, Konami has been a bit faster with hitting things, but then, as I'm saying this, the irony of them not hitting here for over a year. So, well, not over a year, like eight months. But still, I don't know. They might hit Kashira, they might not, but definitely the best deck in the room. Yeah, it's the deck that everyone has to gun for. If your deck hasn't got consistent ways of dealing with both of Kashira's boards, you will lose. And uh, even though we did say Kashira get rattled in the final sometimes, it almost always got rattled due to side cards. For example, in Samir's match, Kashira didn't really lose to Sprite. Kashira lost to Double Kurokara and Talents, for example, which loads of decks would have lost her specific side cards. So, uh, yeah, definitely a, a, a good deck, best deck format. Rescue Ace is not relevant. Pearly is not relevant yet, but it will be good soon. Mechanko, we did not see it do anything. I don't think we will say so somewhere. Plunder Patrol, <sighs> High Rogue. Yeah, I'd say Plunder Patrol is High Rogue. It's a good deck. One of the nice things about Plunder Patrol, I'd say, in fact, I'm actually going to be dry trying up next to Plunder Patrol, is that Plunder Patrol has great synergy with Runic. Um, however, I would say it's a, it's another thing. It's similar to the Fur High thing. And I'd say Plunder's power plays aren't as good as Fur High's. Fur High is going to draw, like, what is it, like, three cards on both of your turns, Plunder is going to probably draw one card, one card on its turn, maybe two, one card in your turn, because I think they've got that card that discards one, draws one, it's just not as good as Fur Hires, which is why I don't think it did as well, which is actually why I'll move the Fur Hire up to the top of Rogue, in fact I'll even, I'll say Fur Hire deserves to be in bottom of tier 2 because it actually topped Plunder, because uh, it actually, well, it came, came in the finals anyway, Plunder, I don't think Plunder topped, so Plunder Runic is good, but not amazing. Crystal Beast, unfortunately, did not do anything. Tournaments Kashira, we did see some people play that. So, yeah, has some potential. I, I, I think that, again, 
the problem with Tyrone Metz is it's just worse Castillo at a certain point. It's just bricky TL or worse Because even though the tier cards have some synergy, synergy with Castillo, for the most part, the biggest problem is the tier cards still are struggling in a Castillo format, and they will until Castillo goes. Dark World, very, very good deck. Bottom of tier 2. Um, the, the biggest problem with Dark World, again, is people were prepared for getting FDK'd by draw and stuff like that, which meant that it didn't do as well as it could have, but people had to prepare for it, because Dark World does just win some matchups for free. i say Dark World is the new... In fact, you know what? Because of the way I think... So Dark World and Dragon, in my opinion, are fundamentally the same deck. They're just different flavours of FDKing you. The only difference is that um, Dragon gives you a chance to play, because... They'll pass to your turn and you have cards in your hand. Dark World won't give you a chance to play. They'll pass to your turn and you have no cards in your hand. But then Drytron has the advantage. Um, um, even though Dark World takes the card out of your hand and Drytron doesn't, Drytron has the advantage in that it's a bit more consistent. Dark World has to rely on a bit of RNG with dangers and drawing the right cards. Drytron just searches everything. But they're both very good. Yeah, FDK in your opponent is always going to be a good thing. Gishki Sprite, I don't know why we didn't see any of that. I don't know, but we didn't see any of it. I'm going to put it at the bottom of the room because I don't think it's bad, but someone can correct me. Maybe Sprite Elf hit was the biggest problem that, like, a lot of people said basically without Sprite Elf, Gishy Sprite is dead, and yeah, I, I, I've never tried that variant, so maybe that actually was the case. Trap Checks, okay, so yeah, we'll say that's the best rogue deck. Um, Trap Checks didn't do amazingly, and I think, again, it, it um, Lundry had a, a good point on the Yu-Gi-Oh! show, which is that essentially people just know how to play against this deck now, and it does have some kind of inherent issues where it just can't deal with big monsters very well, where it can't deal with threats that are already on the board. If you have your opponent goes first and they put monsters on the board, and you don't draw your Raigeki or your Evenly or whatever, it's kind of hard for you to play the game because you just haven't got a consistent way of outing their big monsters, and because of that, that does hold Trap Tricks back a lot. It's a good deck, has some potential, but yeah, that's why we didn't see anything. And then Ninjas. Ninjas are somewhere in non-meta. It's not really a relevant deck. But guys, yeah, so this is my tier list after the 250 FYCS. I am going to have another one in a week or two to talk about Sayak. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace.